My name is Erin Bradley. I am a Gauteng Department of Education teacher at Brian Evan Primary School. Brian Evan Primary School is a school in Johannesburg, South Africa, and we've been using Purple Mash for about a year and a half. Yesterday's lesson, we touched upon using Purple Mash creatively to use and make learning resources. So I'd like to continue on that vein with learning resources with Grade 4C. I hope that you're going to use what I'm going to show you in this lesson. Today's lesson is all about using Purple Mash in learning and teaching. And when I talk about learning and teaching, I imply that you as a learner can be a teacher. You can teach other people certain things. You can help them to do better in their tests and examinations. You then teach someone by making a learning resource in Purple Mash. Purple Mash gives you the creative tools to share with others, to share your resources with other learners and help them to do better. How good is that? As in yesterday's lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to share via emails and blogs. Emailing and blogging is just two ways that I show here to communicate, two ways that we can communicate with other learners. And it's all about teamwork. So you need to organize yourselves and share information when you are studying. And Purple Mash gives you that possibility. I'm going to build an, a resource in text toolkit which is that toolbox that you see in the middle of my screen. And then we're also going to use a mind map as an example. And that's the blogging section. So if I click on the middle tab, you'll see that these blogs are available. I've clicked on the South African flag. And this is opening up the grade four study blog. And that's where we're going to post our information. Our learning resources are going to be posted on the blog for others to access. Other people can then learn by using your resource it's very important that you go into this blog and see and you can see there's already some stuff from yesterday's class with grade 4 c and you can see that we have a body structure activity nelson mandela mind map and there's a bit about mahatma gandhi which is all history which is being written today the body structure one is natural science and technology so that could be useful because that's the exam we're doing tomorrow we're going to use a text toolkit tool to place an activity in this blog. And text toolkit is normally used for English, but we are going to use it for a natural science activity. Natural science tomorrow. You can see this beautiful colored mind map of Nelson Mandela. If I click on the hyperlink, it makes everything more visible. And you've got this multicolored mind map that was very useful for yesterday's exam. And it's been posted in this grade four study blog. Nelson Mandela mind map. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to post your own activity as these children are doing here. The mind map of Nelson Mandela, you'll be able to do one of those as well. You see these little arrows on the mind map. You can just follow those arrows and you can see there's a whole range of different things posted on this blog. Let's go out of that and return to and find text toolkit and that's text toolkit that one over there the toolbox we are going to transform it into a natural science activity let's open text toolkit launch app and that's loading it and you can see by default we've got nouns verbs and adjectives we're going to take that away by going on word types and you can see if i de-check these uncheck them and at the bottom it's showing me that i can add another category so I, this we'll put in our additional categories and i'm going to write mammals choose a very dark color okay let's add another category you go on to word types and i'm going to go add and we'll put in another animal category for our natural sciences and here we've got reptiles and add another one and we'll choose an interesting color dark brown and we will choose fish so we got these three animal categories and now we're just going to type in the different answers that will that will have to be placed in the categories so this is a categorizing skill you've got to know where bits of information fit and now to write the full list of different animals that are going to go into the categories we're going to put these the learners will 
try to get them into the different groupings, a categorizing activity. Now you can see this is selected in yellow, and so I'm going to click on where it would fit in, and the next one is also a mammal, and I'm just clicking on them and clicking on the plus sign at each category to designate the answers and where they fit in. And any learner, you guys can just easily make this activity and share it with your friends on the blog or via email. So I'm going to save my work now. It's important that you give it an appropriate name, so the red button. But before that, I just wanted to show you how to give instructions. It's so a grade four natural science. It's a science activity on animals, categorizing animals, animal types. And over here, you'd give a description of what needs to be done. They could, this will help you with studying for the test or examinations. And when you finish writing in your description, you can even record over there. You can set a time limit. If we just make this 10 seconds, okay. And now we've got a very short little game that can be posted. I'm just going to save it, give it an appropriate name. It's going into my work folder. And we'll write in the name in this block over here, this text block. And it's going to be a grade four test, just showing animal categories, but it's not complete. It's just an example. And many teachers could also use such an example to build a more dynamic activity. There we go to the start. I just want to show you how to share it. So we're going to go to that sharing button, the world over there. Click on it and we've got this drop down that'll come. We click on it and the drop down and you can see here it says shared blogs. Those are blogs that are shared and the South African flag is the grade four study blog just made for term two exams. And the green button over there with the plus sign, that's where you would post your activity. So you give a title, here you would write what the, the game or the activity or the resource is, the learning resource. And in the summary, you could just explain what it is. I'd suggest that you write down the name of the subject in the title. And at the bottom, you can put a little bit of writing and then designate the piece of work. So look here, I've got the activity and I'm going to choose it. Click OK and save. And you can see now it's in the blog. It's loading and you should get a little icon showing it. So I'm just scroll right up and you can see natural sciences, animals. If I click on the play button, it will activate the activity. And this is accessible to all grade fours. It's this blog is just for grade fours. So we can go play and you'll see it's loading, play. And here you can see the timer at the bottom is counting down. I've only got 10 seconds. I'm really not going to make it. And you can see it says time up and you can try again to do it. You've got to work pretty fast to get that done. Anyway, you can make your own and make it more interesting than I have, but that's how you would do it. And you'd post it on the blog. Now I'd like to show you how to share it via the work folder. So you'll see that this orange work folder opens up my work and you can see there's a listing of all the work in the work folder. You can make lots of different folders, but you can see there, there they are. They're all listed over here. I can open the piece of work and you'll see, just close it over there. And now I decide to share. So it's this little green earth button and you've got different options of how to share it. And I'm going to share it. You could choose an embed code, a QR quick response code, and there's a whole lot of different options there. So let's go back to it. And we are sharing it to the blog. So we're going to click on the blog. There's the South African flag. We're choosing that because that's the grade four study blog. Just click on it to open it and you would be able to share it. And can you see, you can even add different levels. Let's return to the sharing bit. So we're going to go to this world, a picture of the button of the world. Click on that and it's going to open up the sharing panel and you've got all these different options of how to share your game. So the world and there are the options and we're going to email. So I'm opening an email it automatically would be at the bottom as a attachment. 
the game would be attached to whoever I'm sending it to. So here I would choose the people I'd like to sh share it with. I'm going to be sharing it to people in the class grade grade 4B. And there's all the learners' names. Ali Jackson on the top. I've just selected them all. Click on the Add button and you can see the whole class is now going to receive this email. And the subject now, and at the bottom you can see my attachment is the learning resource try this guys this is my message that will go out with the attached file now let's just add an address the address of the file so i'm going to duplicate this tab right click and duplicate i'm just going to close the game and i'm going to take the address from the address over here select it right click and copy copy and now i have that address I can bring that into the sharing. So here's my email. I'm just going to paste that into my activity and I'm just going to say session and then I'm going to paste by control V pasting that into my email. And now we can send the email and anyone who clicks on that hyperlink will be able to access the game or through the attachment. Press send and that email says thanks your email has been sent. And I just close this and every single grade four in that class would be able to access the activity. You can share lots, lots of different activities in Purple Mash. You've got to explore and see what activities you can make. Be creative and try to change certain things. Like for instance, this text toolkit we've made into a natural science activity where it was an English activity. It's generally used in the English field. I did say I'd show you how to use the mind map. So we're gonna to go to to connect, which is the mind mapping tool after this. So I'm gonna go out, exit, and we're gonna to go to the home page, click on tools, and we're gonna look for to connect which is one of the creative activities. You can make these wonderful mind maps. To connect is that one. Click on it. Launch app. A teacher could have said a to-do here. And I'm going to go with a blank, just a blank one. But you can see there's all these different options. So we choose. And I can just type in the middle, mammals. And that will be my header. And if I click on this little blue icon over here, with the, I can open it up. And let's change it to purple. I'm going to change the font of mammals, the title to something far larger, 50. Click OK and you can see it looks a lot bigger. If you click on that, you can even bring in a picture by clicking on the picture icon or the picture button. Choose a picture that's appropriate. We're going to go to animals and let's go for a bear. And if we click on OK, we have this wonderful title that will be at the center of our mind map. So mammals we know have fur, so that will be one of our key points. Mammals are generally with fur, so we'll click on and make a little link between the heading and has fur. So you see this blue around the center, if you release that, you'll see we've created a connection from between mammals and having fur, one of the properties of mammals. And then uh, here I'm going to write give birth to live young. One of the features of mammals is that the mother gives birth to live young. They're not born with eggs like you would find in reptiles and fish and all the other animals. So gives birth to live young is going to be my second point. You can change the direction of the arrows by clicking on that. And we've got two points and generally we'd read a mind map like we'd read a clock going clockwise. So the third point is coming up over here and we would just click on it and then write whatever we want to in this box and the mother provides milk that's quite a common feature of mammals i'm not sure if that's part of your grade four content as well we can add a picture into this has fur so if i go to pictures and you'll see the picture will not be as big as the the other one so we're going to go with let's go with the badger click OK and you can see it's, it's as big as the that part the one of this it's not as big as the other title it's not as big as mammals the title and now to save your file we're going to go click on save and it's by default in my work folder and you give it an appropriate name test mammals and 
it's for and it's saved so we go to exit I'm going to exit now and I'm going to show you how to share that from the work folder and you can see test animal types is over here that's the other one that I did before I just don't see my mammal activity the animal activity I've just done now and because I can't see my piece of work I'm going to click on the refresh button I'm just looking down it's not there so refresh I'm just going to refresh the page hopefully it'll load that piece of work into it and wow there it is test mammals mm so I'm going to click on it by default it's already gray indicating that it's open and there's my activity mammals there's the two pictures and let's share it go to this world button and you got the panel it allows you to share we're going to go to email and now we're loading the email and we'll now indicate who we want to send the email to and again I'm using 4B because I'm with 4B at the moment we just click on 4B and all the names have come up over here and let's go with Christopher and Ethan we're going to just send to two people we go add and you can see those two are there that they have this link and then we're going to go my mammal uh, my mind map and then we just we could write something in over here share this and we hope that these two learners will share it with other members of the class and you press on the send button send we press on send and it says thanks your email has been sent so there we've shared a resource which those two learners will share with other people it's sent it via email and we're going to exit let's put this activity in the blog let's share this activity this learning resource via the blog so there's the blog and you can see the South African flag the grade 4 study group and we open it up and straight away you can see the icon loading with the mind map in it we can write the title here we can put a summary of what's involved telling us a little bit about the activity so we when we finish we press on the save button this purple save button and then this activity would be posted in that blog for others to do i think that covers about all that i wanted to show you you have the opportunity to share your resources with other learners via blogs or emails and i'd like you to use this as much as possible because it's a wonderful tool as i showed the class yesterday it's something we need to use a lot more a whole lot of your teachers could also be using some of these in their teaching activities and i hope that it's been useful please subscribe and do support what we're doing here it's most welcomed